everyone, happy Friday. I am back in the sewing room. On Tuesday, this was meant to arrive. And B&Q put the wrong palette on the on the truck. So it didn't arrive until yesterday, which I did film a little bit of on my iPhone and I'm gonna include that now. The MDF has been delivered. This was supposed to arrive on Tuesday and they packed the wrong palette onto the truck. So they've arrived today. We've hopefully cut it smartly because we bought two eight foot by four foot wide pieces and then have I cut it down so that we're going to have two pieces on the top and then the two shelves underneath this will get pieced together. We're going to, as I say, we're putting lino on the top so that there won't be a join to worry about, but the underneath shelves, it doesn't matter if there's a join. So uh, yeah, the uh, fabric bolts have come in from the utility room as well, so that's good. Fingers crossed, Dad and I are going to give it a go at getting it all onto, getting all of that onto that tomorrow, but we'll see how that goes. We may end up waiting until the handyman comes back next Tuesday. Mum's sewing machine is in situ. She has organised quite a lot of her shelves but the fabric is finished. So now all we need to do is find the hinges so we can put the doors on. This one and these two are getting doors but uh, yeah we need to find the hinges for those first. Getting there very slowly but surely. <laughs> it's kind of ground to a halt but it, we will get there. Yeah so that means that we don't have our handyman with us today. Dad and I are going to try and put this together. So <laughs> this could either go really well or it could be terrible. So yeah, we'll we'll see, we'll see. But the cutting table is looking rather beautiful. There's definitely some sanding that needs to go on around the knots and things. So for example, like here, it's just a little bit rough. Like it's not, I'm not getting splinters from it, but if I was using silk and the table is gonna have a ho overhang on the sides because the tabletop is five foot wide and this is not quite five foot wide. I just, I just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go over it, over it with some, um, with some sandpaper. Just so that I don't have one of those moments where I'm like, I wish I'd done that. I'd rather preempt it, even if it's gonna be probably unnecessary. <laughs> so yeah, I've taken the scrap bags of fabric to H&M. It's all looking much more organized in here now. As I think I said in the little clip that I've shown you that I filmed yesterday, we still haven't found the hinges for the doors going on the bookcases over this side. So they are still in the hallway. Fingers crossed we can find some, find them somewhere. <laughs> I mean, we moved with them. They're in the house somewhere, but there's just lots of unpacked boxes in the house and it's all, it is still, we are still kind of living in chaos because we've moved from somewhere with loads of storage to somewhere with no storage. And the bookcases, the carpenters are coming to do that any minute now, I think, which is gonna be great, which will mean a whole bunch of stuff can get unpacked. Our utility room is actually accessed from the outside of the house, not the inside of the house. It's quite a big room, but that's where the two really large Maytag washer and dryer are going. Then we're hoping to put some shelving in for more storage in there. But at the moment it's full of all the boxes that were in our attic. So that's gonna need to get sorted. I've been sorting out some of the boxes that I've stored away of things like my books and DVDs. With my DVDs, I've kind of come to, come to the realization that I don't even have a DVD player anymore. My my one broke. It was it was noisier than the DVD it was playing. It was not happy. So I'm thinking I'm going to sell all my DVDs. I think there's a company, I would have done it on Music Magpie, but I'm not sure that that exists anymore. But there's something called Ziffit, which does pretty much the same thing. I don't know. I was thinking about selling some of my books as well, but I do have like quite a lot of hardcover first editions and those I won't sell. Some of them are signed as well. But some of my other ones, I listen to audiobooks now. I very rarely read. So I'm thinking I maybe want to get rid of those as well because otherwise they're just going to sit in a box in a cupboard until I move and then I'll have to move them yeah who knows who knows anyway I'm getting I'm getting so close to being able to sew I'm so excited I've even kind of got it in my head that if we get this table done today this morning that I might be able to start tracing a pattern this afternoon <laughs> I think I'm going to start with this Vogue pattern that I'm going to use the teal boiled wool that Wilson got me for Christmas. I'm making a coat in the middle of May, a boiled wool coat in the middle of May does not sound like the most, you know, intuitive thing because we're supposed to be in spring and it's getting warm. But it's not, it's cold and wet and rainy outside. I don't know where spring's gone. I think that boiled wool coat might be the way forward. We shall see. Oh, I think I've shown you the lining I'm gonna use, but I'm gonna show you again because it's very cool. I would show you the lining. 
it's in there it's got little iguanas on it but i don't you can see like a back leg of an iguana there but that's the one i'm going to use but i've decided that getting that out <laughs> is probably not the best of ideas so i'm just going to leave that there what's the adage for cutting fabric and cutting wood measure twice cut once uh-huh swear reorder try again <laughs> there was no swearing and buying more material it fit second shelf is on rather randomly b and q have cut the dad had asked for like an eight inch by four in four foot wide board and they've cut them way shorter than four foot so they're not going to fit but that's okay because it won't matter that the bolts of fabric are hanging off the end slightly and we can always retrofit that at a later date and this shelf is going to have the cutting mats and things like that stored on it so it's not the end of the world i'm hoping hoping all of those bolts are going to fit in here it'll be fine yeah we're gonna dad's put countersunk screw holes in so we're going to attach these to the planking or whatever this is called the timber and um, attach those properly and then we're going to work on the top, which I've no idea how that's going to work, but I am doing as I am told. <laughs> Permanently being fixed in place. There's no changing our minds after this. You can change your mind. There won't be any execution. <laughs> right. On to the top. Under the top. Oh, it's working. So we've got all of our cutting mats there. This is the calico and interfacing on bolts. This is all my bolted fabric down here. There is room for more. I'm not saying I'm going to buy more, but there is room. If anybody is interested, these are the brackets that Dad used. I got he got them from B and Q, I think. Okay, so simply build it DIY utility kit. Just add timber. So we used one whole set and then half of another set so he's got four brackets left to use for something else in the future but that is the system that he used to make sure that everything's perfectly square so the tabletop's definitely not going anywhere it is going to be covered in lino and then we're going to get some rounded trim to go over the sides to make sure that it's not going to snag on any fabric i am a little worried about tracing out on this because i'm worried about the tissue paper snagging i may not start the coat this afternoon but i need to sweep the floor for like the 15th time i've done it four times so far already but we will get there our hoover was left outside in the rain which was unfortunate so i can't hoover the floor because the hoover's dripping wet yeah i'm tidying up and then i'm going to unfold my table and see what we're looking at for working space when the cutting table is smooshed right into the corner this is where it's going to live for the majority of the time i'm gonna to have to work out where the iron and ironing board are going to go but i'm believing in this area here it's coming together so you come in the front door and it is a sort of you know a tight walkthrough but it's not too bad mum can have her table top up it fits oh that's heavy <laughs> And then with my table up, there is again a small walk through here to the ironing board. The, there's a plug up there, so the iron's going to get plugged in and put there. I won't be able to have this part of my table fully extended like I used to, because if I do that, the walk through here is way too small. I mean, the nice thing about this table is that it can be put like this, it can be pushed back under. It can be put onto here so i'm hoping it will still work we will soon see i don't ever use the back flap of mine or very rarely if i need to i can move the cutting table further back it'll just mean that it needs to be moved for us to get in and out but i very very rarely use the back of this i don't quilt very often i do make quilt tops but i very rarely actually quilt them mum very kindly does that for me it all fits which is great so now I can start doing something sewing related in here. Like I said, I'm a little reluctant to put tissue paper on that tabletop just because I'm worried it's going to snag. I think I might start working through my bag of scrap 
scraps. Let me actually talk to you. I think I'm going to start working through my bag of scraps and start making hair ties, scrunchies, those kind of things because I've been keeping all those scraps for ages for that exact purpose. I was in town the other day and I bought some hair tie elastics. I ended up buying a hundred of them so I have plenty to get working on. It's fairly mindless sewing. It's kind of lots of rectangles. I'm going to put little ties on them so they look like little bows because I think that's really pretty. You know it's not completely just rectangular sewing but yeah it's a lot of mindless sewing but at least it will be sewing. <laughs> which will be great. My birthday present arrived from my brother and Big Bird today. I ordered the last 2.2 meters of this Brielle wool from Lady McElroy via Sherwoods. I have two and a half meters there and I ordered, they had 2.2 meters left so I ordered that and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get a wide leg pair of trousers, probably the sorrel trousers, and a waistcoat out of both of those cuts of fabric, which I am excited about. I'm going to sit in here and listen to an audiobook and sort of like have a bit of a play, I think, because it's, it's just, I haven't been in here for ages and it's lovely. I've gone through all the little blue cards in my patterns and labelled them because up until that this point they have not been labelled. Looking at it I'm thinking maybe I should have done both sides but never mind, maybe later. I'm going to go up to the main house for some lunch though because I'm hungry. You're sitting on the cutting table and that's actually a great height except you're still on the squiff, sorry. <laughs> I really must get better at putting my camera to be to be level anyway yeah it's 10 past four in the afternoon I have got out the Vogue 9037 pattern and I am reading through the instructions there are some changes that I want to make I'm going to be doing view C and this is an unlined coat but as I mentioned earlier I am going to be using the iguana fabric as a lining for it so I'm going to need to draft that but that should be fairly easy I'm also going to do a hem facing rather than turning up the hem I never like turning up hems on coats especially when there's fullness to ease up not that there is on this one but there are squares or square there are right angle corners on the bottom of the hem yeah I don't want to try and turn that up and make that look neat I'm just going to do a hem facing and the last time I did that I made it sort of two inches wide and by the time I'd seamed everything together it was less than an inch and a half wide and I'd like it to be two inches wide finished so I need to remember that when I am drawing that out and adding seam allowance and stuff. But yeah, it looks like a fairly simple coat. It shouldn't be too difficult to do. It shouldn't need too much fitting because it is kind of a wrap coat and it's oversized. I think I'm going to get away without having to make a muslin for this. I will do the standard kind of like lengthen the bodice by an inch and as I say I'm going to draft a, a hem facing and a lining for this but other than that I... Oh and I'm going to put on belt carriers because it has a belt but it doesn't have any belt carriers and I think that's one of the you, uh, one of the things when you have a coat you want to be able to undo it and not have to worry about the you know like the the belt once you've undone it so yeah belt carriers I'm going to put those on as well it is called a very easy vogue pattern and I think it's going to be very easy for a reason I'm making it out of boiled wool which behaves itself really well I believe don't think I've ever worked with boiled wool before so that's going to be interesting I'm planning on top stitching all of the seams down as an added decorative measure because I think I'm going to like how that looks but I am going to practice on a couple of scraps first to see which finish I like I do have a clapper which will help me press the wool flat the seams flat so if I end up not top stitching the seams down it won't be the end of the world yeah I'm looking forward to it I'm really looking forward to it it's gonna be good I'm thinking because I am a little bit worried about the tissue tearing on the top of the cutting table on the MDF because there are some rough edges there are dad has countersunk all of the screws so there aren't any screw heads for it to catch on but I do think I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is put a layer of tracing paper down then put the, the uh, pattern tissue over the top and try and trace it that way and that's how I used to do it on the kitchen surface the flooring guy is coming next week to fit the lino to the top of the table so it's nearly finished nearly nearly finished and I think then I have my 2021 make nine plans and I have been fantasizing about trying to recreate this Zimmerman dress that I mentioned in my get the look for less Zimmerman video. I have some, is it easily accessible? No it's not but I have some fabric that I featured in my, that's one of my make nine 20. 
21 make nine fabrics i think it's a really good candidate as a wearable muslin for hacking the mccall's pattern into that zimmerman or a zimmerman-esque dress i think it's going to be i think it's going to look really cool I think it's going to work really well but the fabric was an inexpensive georgette that i got from the textile center so if it doesn't work it's not the end of the world and i haven't used my really expensive silk chiffon which i am in equal parts really looking forward to working with and absolutely dreading working with at the same time like i say it's quarter past four i would start tracing now but the iron needs cleaning it was put in the laundry room in the utility room in the house they put uh, the workmen put up some new shelves and they corked around the edge of the shelves and the tip of the iron got smooshed into the cork so i had to really pull it out and it's got it all over the tip of it i obviously don't want to get that onto anything and i also don't want to heat it up because i have a feeling that's probably not something you should breathe in when it's hot but uh, dad <laughs> dad has been very busy today as you have seen building this table so i'm not going to ask him to get that done today i'm just i mean i have I'm halfway through my latest Get the Look for Less video, which is the Dolce & Gabbana specific one. So I, I've got some more editing to do for that. I'm hoping I can get that up tonight. It's been a while since I put a video up, <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. So yeah, it's been a really good day though, which is great. As you guys know, I like reading these pattern instructions over and over again. So I, that's what I've been doing. I'm pretty confident that it's going to fit and it's going to look awesome. And I'm making it in that this teal wool here once that's made up actually there's going to be quite a lot of space in that cubby hole which is going to be good i have some coat interlining uh, cotton fleet um cotton flannel down here that's in my cotton lining cubby hole so that can then move over there to the rest of where the coat stuff is yeah it's good it's very good i have some fabric in the laundry at the moment some rayon that i got from la Masi fabrics it's this one i took a photo of it when they put it up uh, like uh, uh, they uh, put it up on their instagram they i took a photo like a screen capture of it because i do that when i see fabrics i'm just like oh that's beautiful i kept my eye on it and it got down to the last two and a half meters and i got myself the last two and a half meters I, I would like a dress out of it and i know that i can get the butterick 6380 i think i have that number right i think i can get that out of two and a half meters i would like to make the sleeves on that flutter sleeves i have made the little puff puff short sleeves that come with the pattern and they were super tight even at the largest size so i am going to slash and spread those to make them into flutter sleeves and i think that's going to look amazing if i can't get it out of two and a half meters which i think i can i'm going to make a shirt with giant giant sleeves because i love giant sleeves i have got that fabric in the wash and then i have some of this fabric coming from sherwood fabrics this is their pure organic lady mcelroy cotton lawn and i'm going to be interested to see how it's different from their regular cotton lawn i absolutely love this print and i think what i want to do with this print is use it with the insertion trim that i got from pit trading i think that's going to look really really cool i think it's going to end up being like a tiered skirt with the insertion trim put in a couple of places not 100 percent sure yet I'm, I'm looking forward to having play with that one but that's coming as well and then that's it for fabric buying until we go to the festival of quilts at the end of july beginning of august you know that's june july and then half of may so two and a half months buying no fabric oh actually i'm telling a lie i got given a minerva crafts voucher for my birthday to buy some denim with because i would like to make some super wide leg trousers with jean like detailing on them so that they kind of look like super wide leg jeans but i think i'm going to use a trouser pattern rather than a jean pattern because i think i'm going to prefer it so i have that fabric coming as well although i haven't ordered that yet and i'm going to get some shearing elastic whilst i'm doing that as well because the zimmerman dress that i want to make is going to need some shearing around the cuffs and the waist so i do have one more length of fabric coming the denim from minerva crafts but then <laughs> two and a half month fabric buying ban and i need to work my way through this lot slight caveat if i need to buy some plain cotton lawn for interli uh, for not interlining for lining then i will because there's a couple of dresses that i want to make from some cotton lawn the dolce and gabbana cotton lawn that is going to need lining and i don't 
how, how much white cotton lawn I have down there. I think I have five meters, but I'm not sure. And I probably, given the size of the dresses that I like to make, probably gonna need a little bit more than that. So I can buy lining fabrics, but no fashion fabric. That was a very long-winded waffle at you, wasn't it, about the fact that I'm not gonna buy fabric anymore. Not until the Festival of Quilts. It's not a money-saving device because I'm going to save up all the money that I would have spent on fabric over the next two and a half months and I'm going to spend it at the Festival of Quilts. We've booked our tickets. Just really hope we can go, it doesn't get cancelled. So touch wood, touch all IKEA furniture, because I'm not sure any of this is actually wood. You're on wood, I'll touch you later. That sounds wrong, doesn't it? Fingers crossed we can actually go, but yeah, it's not money saving, it is, <laughs> well it is money saving, I am saving up for the festival of quilts and I'm going to splurge. <laughs> so I need to sew a lot of this so that I have somewhere to store all the stuff when I come back. I mean I picked out nine fabrics haven't I for my make nine, they're the ones that I want to work on next. I also have down here the fabric and pattern that I got from the So Vintage Fabulous, I think I've got that right, So Vintage Fabulous box from the buttonhole. I have filmed me opening that. I want to film my finished dress and then I want to give you guys a full, re a re a full review on the entire process because the very lovely Liz sent me the box to review as a press product. That needs to get made at some point soon as well. One of the nice things about the So Vintage Fabulous box is that you get a Zoom call to help with any fitting issues and I had it in my calendar, I was ready for it and I turned up and I'd missed it. I was an hour late. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I'd like specifically stayed in that night because I was in London at the time. So we specifically had stayed in to watch the sewing beat and go to the Zoom chat. And I missed it by an hour. I was an hour late. And I have no idea because I got two emails telling me what time it was. I just, yeah. But I really like that about the that box is that you get fitting help with the pattern, which I think is awesome. But yes, like I said, I'd like to make the dress and then give you guys a full review of the entire process once I'm done. Anyway, can you tell I haven't waffled at you for a while because now I just can't shut up. So I'm going to go back to my house. It's not my house anymore, is it? I'm going to go back to my room <laughs> in the main house, sit with Chi, get some editing done. I'm going to edit this. I'm going to hopefully finish editing the Get Look For Less video. Hopefully clean the iron and then tomorrow I can start tracing out and hopefully cutting out this pattern. It's going to be very exciting very very exciting so yeah i hope you've enjoyed what i have waffled about today i know there's been a lot <laughs> probably a lot of waffle about a table and some fabric but this is a sewing channel and it is a very exciting table so yes i hope you've enjoyed today's video and i will see you all very soon bye